Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about TCP and how it is a connection-oriented protocol. Now you might recall from the introduction to TCP and UDP video that TCP is connection-oriented and UDP is connectionless. So just as a refresher, connection-oriented means before two devices send and receive any data to each other, they first establish a connection. In other words, they go ahead and they negotiate how they want to send and receive all the different parameters and details involved in that, in that communication. And then once they're both happy with that, then they move on to sending data. So that's connection oriented. Connection list simply means no connection is established first before sending data. In fact, they just skip right to sending data. So that's connection list. And most protocols are either connection oriented or connectionless. This is not something specific to TCP and UDP. They just happen to fall into those two categories. However, we're going to take a look at TCP and see specifically how it goes about establishing connections and tearing them down. And so that's our agenda. We'll first start with how sessions are established. And then once we are done with that, we'll move on to how TCP will terminate a particular connection. And this is really good to know and understand because TCP is so widely implemented, you're going to come across it a number of times, not only in your studies, but definitely on the job. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we have PC1 and PC2 here, and we're going to use them to illustrate how TCP establishes a connection. So it all starts with PC1 sending a message to PC2. This message is a SYN message, S-Y-N. And that stands for synchronize. Now what, it, what does PC1 want to synchronize with PC2? Well specifically, it wants to synchronize the sequence numbers that it will use to send data to PC2 after the connection is established. So TCP uses sequence numbers to identify all the different segments of data that it will send to somebody. So it'll start, say, at number 5, and then the next segment will be number 6, and then number 7, and so on and so forth. P uh, TCP uses uh, sequence numbers uh, for a number of different things, uh, including error recovery and, and ordering of data. So this initial message is saying, here are the sequence numbers, here's the one I'm going to start using, let's go ahead and synchronize. There will also be some port information, if you remember the, the socket conversation we had in the introduction to TCP and UDP, well that information is there as well. What port am I interested in using? So that's step one, a SYN message. Step two is another SYN message and in that same message there's an ACK, which stands for acknowledgement. So let's look at these two. In the SYN message, PC2 is going to go ahead and tell PC1 what sequence number it's going to start using in order to identify the segments of data it will eventually be sending to PC1. Not only that, but there's an, there's an ACK in this message, and the ACK stands for acknowledgement, and what it's saying is, I acknowledge the information you sent me in your original SYN message. So now PC1 knows, okay, great. You received my SYN, I see your SYN, and you're acking mine. So I know you received my information. That is step two. Now step three, which by the way is the final step, looks like this. Finally, PC1 is going to send an ACK back to PC2, which simply acknowledges the information sent in the SYN, saying PC1 says, okay, I received your SYN, I acknowledge that you're going to be using these, this sequence number to begin sending your data, great. And that is the end of the connection establishment um, uh, step. So there are three steps in total when TCP establishes a connection. This is sometimes referred to as the three-way handshake because there are three steps. 
After this happens and there are no problems, a full duplex conversation is now established. In other words, PC2 and PC1 can both send and receive data to each other at the same time. All right, so that is connection establishment. Now let's go ahead and let's assume that they both have sent a lot of data to each other and now they want to go ahead and tear down the, the connection. I'm done looking at a web page. I close my browser. What happens? So we had three steps in the establishment. We actually have four steps in the termination. And it looks like this. It'll begin with PC1 sending a fin, which stands for finished, message to PC2. And all that means is, I'm not going to be sending you any more data, and I'm closing my session with you. Now, PC2, when it receives the fin, is going to immediately respond with an ACK, letting PC1 know that it received that fin. Now, before PC2 does anything else, internally, TCP is going to go ahead and notify the application that is associated with this session. Remember, we use port numbers to identify applications. So TCP notifies the application that PC1 wants to close the session. That enables the application to go ahead and do whatever it needs to do to, to finish this conversation. Next, PC2 sends a fin back to PC1. So that tells PC1, okay, I'm not going to be sending you any more data, and I want to close this session as well. That's step three. The final step, step four, is simply PC1 saying, okay, I acknowledge receiving your fin. At this point, the connection is terminated. And normally, Either side can go ahead and initiate a termination. However, usually it's the client because if I'm a client, I'm on a, a web browser at home, I go to a website for a specific purpose, I read an article, I know when I'm done, and usually the client is the one who closes the browser or who terminates the session. However, it could, it could be uh, terminated by either side. All right, so that is the TCP uh, termination, um, and there are four steps. Okay, so let's go ahead and summarize what we covered. We know there are connection-oriented protocols like TCP and connection list protocols like UDP. When TCP establishes a connection, it uses the three-way handshake in order to do so. In other words, there are three steps to that process. When it goes ahead to terminate a connection, TCP actually has four steps involved. And we now are familiar with a few different types of TCP messages, like the SYN for synchronize, the ACK for acknowledgement, and the FIN for finished. So it's a good idea to commit these processes to memory. Know the three-way handshake. Know which messages are exchanged, as well as the messages, messages exchanged when a connection is terminated. Because it's very useful to know when you're troubleshooting if TCP is properly setting up a connection or if it's properly tearing it down. This could be very helpful. All right, so that's it. That is TCP and how it establishes and terminates connections. Thanks for watching.